Greetings, people who prefer grammar over rioting and pillaging. If you've watched the previous videos in this series, you'll know I've been talking about the word that, and I discussed its five contemporary or traditional grammatical functions. Then I talked about how I kind of renamed some of those functions. And now up to this point, we've done the first three, and I'm up to number four. And the whole point of the recent discussions has been this question. It's, is that really a relative pronoun? And is the so-called relative clause really a relative clause? Okay, so that's how far we are. Now, this is very difficult. This is the most difficult video that I've done, this fourth grammatical function of the word that. It's even harder than my music videos. And to try to figure out what the word that is in the fourth grammatical function, I really had to dig deep. And you might think this is crazy or somewhat stupid, but I really dug deep and I came up with this a long time ago. And um, I'd like to share it now before I drop over dead. Now, if it's not a relative pronoun, and it's not really a relative clause, then what the hang is it? Okay, now, to figure out what it is, or, or what it is in my small mind, I'm going to use analysis. And I'm going to do analysis from three perspectives, okay? From three different approaches. I'm going to use the abstract approach. In other words, what is that as an abstract? The integral approach. What is that as an integral part of a sentence that's, that's kept in place? Okay. And then I'm going to look at the word that from an isolated perspective. In other words, can we isolate the word and the so-called relative clause? Can we pull it out and take a peek at it? So here we have abstract. We're going to go deep. We're going to go integral. We're going to keep it on the same level that we see it, the surface level. Then we're going to pull it out in, in a, <clears throat> excuse me, metaphysical or a metafunction way, okay? <coughs> excuse me. I was just outside doing yard work and um, it messes up my head. All right, so now an abstract, okay, an abstract, uh, one definition might be something that summarizes or concentrates the essentials of a larger thing or several things. Okay, that's something that summarizes or concentrates the essentials of a larger thing or several things. So I think that term will fit well in this analysis. So let's take our sample sentence. The plant that died was a rose. Okay, the plant that died was a rose. Now, <clears throat> for <laughs> zillions of years, humans have developed grammar and languages and such. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so there has to be something inside the head that goes on to give us the grammar and the syntax that we presently employ in life. There has to be something because we know it developed. Now we know there was a, a grammar book 2,000 years ago in Greece. There was the first grammar book uh, of a Western language. Now we know in the 1500s there was a grammar book, the first grammar book for the English language in the middle of the 1500s. So we know grammar has been going on for at least a few thousand years, but for the human brain it, it must have been going on so much longer. So what happens in the brain? So I think this is what happens deep, deep in the brain, okay? We have at first, okay, initially, originally, we have the plant died. The plant was a rose. We have two kind of separate thoughts, but the thoughts themselves are complete, and I call them a genuine clause. I don't, I don't call it a, an independent clause or a main clause for now. I call it genuine because it's the actual real clause, and the key thing is it can stand alone, okay? It can stand on its own. So we have two clauses that can stand on their own. 
But what if the idea you wish to impart, the, 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 the thing you, you want to portray, entails both of these ideas? In other words, it, it entails, it involves the essence of both of these genuine clauses. Well, the mind will put it together. And I think it does it like this. I, I think this is one of the many ways. This is one of the many ways. So we have the plant died and the plant was a rose. All right, so in the mind, the mind will take that period, the word the and the word plant, all right, right, and it will substitute for that the word that. The plant that died was a rose. Do you see? This, this was transformed, this punctuation, and these two words were transformed into one single word. Now, to me, while I was studying this and digging in, I thought this is a beautiful thing, how this can work. And I think it would take a long time for computers to figure this out. Computers are really smart now, and they can talk to you and all that kind of stuff. But to actually figure this out, and then, and then make a program that not only speaks correctly, but can explain why it spoke correctly, I think that's, I don't think that's here yet. I don't think we're ready for that yet, technologically. So, so what happened was then, the word that is kind of a deep pro form, pro forms I talked about earlier, it's a substitute for something, it stands in for something. That is a deep pro form for both words and punctuation. It's a pro form for words and punctuation. A, a regular ordinary pronoun cannot do this. A regular ordinary pronoun can't do this. I've never heard anybody even talk about the regular ordinary pronoun doing that. I haven't heard it. I've seen it. I went on the internet the past few days looking all around for a study of the word that that goes deep like this. I haven't found one, not a one. So here we have a deep mechanical kind of a transformational thing. And so when we're looking for that fourth new term, one of my terms, all right, for the fourth grammatical function of the word that, all right, it's, and it's not in the base form, all right, then at least we have our first term for that fourth grammatical function. We already have one of three terms that we could choose from, and that would be an abstract pro form. That's what I just showed you. An abstract, it's bizarre, it's essential, it's deep, it's weird. An abstract pro form. This turns into that, right? And why does it come directly after the word plant? because it substitutes for the word plant. And yet, it's not a pronoun. It's not plant plant. Like in my previous videos, it's not the plant plant. It's not that. It's the plant that. And you can see what happened here. You can see clearly what happened. So we have, for our fourth grammatical function, all right, we have the term abstract pro form, because remember I told you, in the other applications, grammatical functions, the word that comes before the other significant word in the relationship. It comes before, but in number four, the fourth grammatical function under my system, the word that comes after the other significant word in the relationship. And that's it, I won't go on and on. We'll get to the second part. We'll take a look at the word that as an integral part of something integral. We'll do that next one. So thanks for being incredibly patient and I uh, hope to see you soon. Good night.